Tarzan of the Apes. From out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' immortal book, we recall the strange history of Tarzan. Tarzan the mighty hunter. Tarzan the white god of a dark continent. Tarzan of the Apes. You're mad, John. You're mad. There's only one way for you to save your skin now, and that is for you to let me resume command. Throw yourself on the mercy of the court when we return. If you assume command of this boat, it's your death warrant. I'm the first mate. I take command when anything happens to the captain. Isn't that right? When anything happens to the captain? Yes, it will. Well, get down to it, John. Get down to it. What do you want? What do you think, Professor Porter? I really wouldn't know, Mr. Young. I have never made a study of ship rats. No, but you've made a study of old maps. Where is it? Unfortunately, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Show that. Where is it? If you will tell me what you are looking for, then perhaps I might not prove so obtuse. Listen, you old fool. I'm talking about that chart. The one on which the treasure is indicated. Break it out. Where is it? Mr. Yon, do you mind if I open this port and let in some air? Fango, open that port for the lady. Oh, yeah. Oh, never mind. I'll do it. Fango, get that lover off of the floor and stow him on the bunk. Oh, yeah. Mr. Clayton seems to be taking quite a nap. He, he isn't dead. No, he's all right. Well, Yon, what's your procedure? Porter, where's that chart? Well, really, I... You don't know, huh? I haven't the slightest conception what you're talking about. Bad memory, eh? Well, there's a cure for that. An old Chinese cure. Gates, Bango, get the professor below. We'll try the water cure for his memory. Aye, aye, sir. Come on here, Governor. Uh, uh, Come me. on now, uh, put your bleed now. Oh, Come on here. Me. Don't be here, you aren't... You wouldn't resort to torture. No. Listen, Tracy. I'm not permitting mutiny to be stopped by that old goat. Yes, I'll torture him. And if he doesn't come through then, there's the woman there. I want that chart, and I'm going to have it. You're just a little too late, Mr. Young. Late? I threw the chart out the porch when I opened it just now. Jane, you, you, you didn't. Why, why, that chart might have opened a, a new vista of history. I'm sorry, Father, but... Oh, you threw it out of the port, did you? Well, young lady, I think you're lying. And for your sake, you'd better be. I'm going to search your stateroom. And if I don't find it... Gates, you and Fango keep watch here. Adios, Skipper. I would suggest, John, that you drop anchor. You're coming in pretty close. Coastal curve is very gradual on the African West Coast. I'll run the boat, Tracy. I see you will. A ground. And another thing. If I don't find that chart in your stateroom, I'm going to give you exactly a half an hour to produce it, Porter. And then your daughter will wish you had. You swine! We're in a quandary, I say. What would you suggest doing, Captain? John isn't bluffing. The best thing is to give him the chart he's talking about. Because if we don't, John will make good his threats. Uh, where is the chart, my dear? Uh, uh, be careful that these men don't overhear. I told the truth, Father. I did throw it overboard. You mean the chart is gone? Oh, yes. Will it make any, any difference? Any difference? All the difference in the world. You'll never get John to believe that you threw it out that port. You'll think you're trying to keep it from him. He'll try to make you tell by every way his devilish mind can think of. Oh, Jane, you, you shouldn't have done that. There, there's no way to get it back now. There might be. How? How? You know it's... that small jade green bottle that contained poison, Captain? The one you told me to take out of your drawer? Yes. Well, I poured the contents of that out. I rolled the chart up and put it in the bottle before I threw it out the port. It might have washed ashore. It has a good chance of it. The current in the coal swings up against the beach. Uh, good, good. The loss of that chart would seriously affect the opportunity of finding vast treasure. The loss of that chart means more than that, Professor Porter. It will mean the loss of all our lives. We've got to find that chart. We have to find it, that's all. And if we don't... It will be unfortunate that Miss Porter emptied the contents of that bottle. 
Meanwhile, Yant, the mutinous first mate, has searched every inch of the passengers' cabins, ripping open mattresses, scattering the contents of their luggage. But to no avail. He cannot find the chart. Yant has risked much to get the chart. He leaves the wreckage of the last cabin. He will have that chart. He'll resort to the terrible torture used many years ago on the China Seas, the water cure, where the victim has water forced down his throat until his eyes protrude and his stomach distends, until the intense pressure inside his body bursts his heart. Anything to get that chart. Gaining the deck, Yant notices that the boat is well into the harbor. He orders the anchors dropped and the engines cut. Then, with a fiendish, dreadful glint of purpose making his eyes inhumanly cruel, he makes for the salon. He rips open the door. Tangle, go below. Bring four men topside with buckets and lots of water. See here, Yant. You're making a mistake. That chart did go out the port. I don't believe it. They're all lying. But when I get through with you, you'll be begging to tell the truth. Begging. Don't be a fool, Yant. We know what you're planning to do. Listen. Miss Porter threw that chart out the port. Before she did, she put it in a jade green bottle. Current in this cove will wash that bottle up on the beach. Let me and one of your men go ashore and look for it. To find it's our only chance of saving our skins. Yant, convinced that Captain Tracy is telling the truth, finally agrees that the captain shall go ashore with two of his men to look for the bottle on the beach. But before Captain Tracy leaves, Yant takes the two men who are to accompany him outside the cabin and talks to them. Gates, you and Fango go ashore with Tracy. He's looking for a jade green bottle that's washed ashore. Aye, aye, sir. And when you come back, come back alone. Understand? I understand, sir. We'll stick the blighter. Fangles a hitch in the carvies even initials in somebody's back. All right. Get those davits out and put that boat over the side. Crouching high up in a tree hidden from view, Tarzan watches as a small boat bearing three men pulls to shore. The ape man for the first time is seeing beings of his own kind. His first impulse is to drop down the tree, run down to the beach to greet them. But the shyness of a wild thing keeps him motionless, staring from his retreat. Fango, the giant Ch- Chinese, whose eyes are dead and unblinking as a serpent's, and the sly cockney gates are rowing the heavy boat. In the bow sits Captain Tracy, his weather-beaten face a mask. Tarzan watches the men beach the boat and start walking slowly down the shore looking for something. Tarzan follows them, swinging slowly, silently from branch to branch in the wooded fringe which separates the jungle from the shore. Studying the first of his fellow men that he has ever seen, Tarzan takes a liking to the captain. The other two he despises. They slink behind the tall men as two cowardly hyenas following a sick lion. Tarzan's mind is in a chaos of curiosity. For what are they looking? Then he sees the tall man reach down with a cry and pick up something green from the beach. The two others snatch it from his hand. With a gesture, Tarzan freezes. There will be a fight. Two against one. Tarzan will go to the aid of the tall man. But to his surprise, the tall man merely shrugs and turns about to return to the boat. Is he afraid, Tarzan wonders? They retrace their steps. The tall man is still ahead, followed by the copper man and the weazened one. Tarzan follows them. His keen eyes see the weazened man nod to the copper man, whose eyes are like hista, the snakes. The copper man slowly draws a long knife from his waist. He stoops, then rushes up behind the tall man. <laughs> Tarzan yells to warn him. Tracy turns at the fearful cry. The Chinaman's knife is descending on him. Tracy's fist shoots out. It lands on the oriental jaw. The knife descends, gashing his arm. But the blow has sent Fango back so that the cruel blade is not plunged into his body. For a second, all three stand motionless. Then Gates dives at Tracy's legs. Tracy brings up his foot, catches Gates full in the mouth. Gates groans but catches the captain's legs. He goes down. Fango jumps on the captain, patting both knees in his chest. Raises his knife, trying to plunge it into Tracy's heart. Tarzan drops from the tree, dashes down the beach toward the fighting men. The knife flashes downward. 